Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, shalom, Chavarim, shalom. Greetings. Judge Joe Brown is right. And also, you know, um, the real Dana. He love the real Dana. Dana, Dana. <laughs> Dana Dane. Yeah, real Dana. Check out the real Dana, you know, and Judge Joe Brown. Very excellent show. And also, he love Troy Trevane star as well because recall back in the recent days, you know, how Dana, you know, kind of got her got her start, at least in this way, and she really has been moving forward and really enjoying many of her podcasts, sometimes agreeing, sometimes disagreeing, but this particular subject matter where she has a vlog up there, where it's called, um, what's the name of it? It's uh, Judge Joe Brown says, Black Americans got no culture. I think it's a Tariq, uh, Tariq Nasheed, a Tariq radio clip, where ones and ones, I think some Haitian sister, and some other ones are speaking about how, you know, black people in America, how we got out of kind of like rise, you know, for freedom from the Haitian Revolution. Now, what people often forget, right, is the Geechee Gullah Wars. I got to say it again. The Geechee Gullah Wars, which prove that black so-called Americans, you know, we, the Beta Israel, you know how we go, we say we're the Beit Yisrael, the Beta Israel, like there's the Beta Israel of the East, right, the black Jews, like of Ethiopia, but there's also the black Jews, or the Yehudim, right, elsewhere as well, this is who we identify who we are, but to Judge Joe Brown's point, Judge Joe Brown is right, he's right, at first when I heard him say that, I'm like, and you know, when it first played, I, I kind of listened for a moment, I was saying, um, Judge Joe Brown, usually I can understand he's he reminds me of my earthly, my earthly father. You know, he comes from that generation, but he's in tune, you know, with what's going on now. Perhaps being a judge, being so involved within, you know, the black, you know, struggle. You know, our we the black people over here, you know, we the black people here in these Americas and Caribbean. So heal up to Judge Joe Brown. Judge Joe Brown is is right. You know, and here in the full of fullness, hear him explain his point. He has a real point. And there was one particular point that he made in his particular point that was very, very interesting. He said that if we, you know, had a culture <laughs> where you hit this point, my elder, my elder brother, it was right on. And you're going to get a lot of flack. You know, he was getting a lot of flack from Dana. And Dana was seeking to make certain points and she was making points, but on a level she was flailing, like she was flailing. And I kind of agreed with what she was saying in her perspective until I was listening to her seeking to make certain points. Like, oh, Judge Joe Brown said, well, what is our culture? Check out the clip for yourself. I'm just giving a little commentary right here and hopefully we can build on it because we're going to theme this one right here that we black Americans have lost, have lost black Americans lost, have lost. We've lost our culture. We lost our culture, but listen to the clip on the real Dana because there's some very important words that Brother Joe Brown, you know, Elder Brother Joe Brown, that he he says. He says that we can claim it. I mean, we can reclaim it. You know, we can like resurrect it. You know, we can kind of like reboot it in a sense. You know what I mean? We can almost like start again, you know, as it were. But first thing first, we got to recognize that we lost. Right? If we think that we're winning, right? And this is this is the problem. We think that we're winning, right? But we actually have lost, right? Hold on, right here. Yeah, we think we're winning, but we actually have lost, right? We haven't fully lost as far as this, the the bigger battle. You know, there's this bigger battle. We see the bigger battle against like white racism, and white supremacy here in this times of the Gentiles. But to Judge Joe Brown's point. When he says that black Americans don't have no culture and that music, you know, and singing and dancing, right, is not necessarily our culture. It brought to mind the root of the whole matter, right? In the beginning was the word, right? So what does the word culture mean, right? Chabarim, what's the word culture? Right, from low degrees to high degrees, we're not going to jump over into the linguistics, into the language, other languages, our root languages. When we talk about our Afro Afro, our Afro-Semitic. See, we are Afro-Semitic, Afro-Asiatic people, right? Even the Nation of Islam said the Asiatic black man. Some people think that, you know, when they say Asiatic, right, they're listening to white supremacy, white racism, right, and to the miseducation, right, here in these times here of the Gentiles. But what is our culture? What does culture mean? Have we lost our culture? What do you think? Did we lose our culture, right? 
do we have culture as black Americans? And we're spe specifying this as black Americans. We, the black people here in this North country called America, right? We're not speaking about uh, the South America right now. We're not speaking of the Caribbean or the Caribbean, whether Benjamin, Jaman, Yaman, Jamaica, right? Or whether as some would say Lewi, Levi, or Haiti, Haiti. We're not speaking about that right now. Right, because there's a whole other reason that was a part of what we heard, you know, on The Real Dana. She played this clip, right, where a few black people, you know, from different places are having this debate concerning black American culture and, and, and how others, you know, we've heard this argument, too, you know, from some of the Benjamin Ziyadis saying, you know, years ago, over 20, 30 years ago, saying that, you know, you black Americans would not have no culture, you know, or would not know your roots, you know, almost like they helped us to know ourselves, and they'll point to Marcus Messiah Garvey, right? But then what a lot of black Americans don't know is that there was others before Garvey. So when Garvey came here, Garvey was actually isolated in Jamaica, right, with his particular mentality and like the chosen few, right? And it was suppressed, but then when he came here to this North country, to America, there was already like-minded ones, and he became like a galvanizing force. Right? He became like that spokesman. But there was already a movement. That's what we're trying to say. There's already, there was already a movement. Right? And so Garvey came as like that capstone. It's like when we look at the pyramid, even on the dollar bill, and you see how it goes up to a certain point. You have that eye, you know, that eye right there that's not really attached. Even if you look at Nubia or Sudan, there's those other kind of pyramids there. They're, they're more like the dollar bill pyramid. Actually, if you look at the angle, you know about geometry, you know, but that's a whole other matter right there. But it's like Marcus Garvey, right? People will say, well, Black people in America, we got our culture or we got this awakening of blackness because of Marcus Garvey. Well, actually, Marcus Garvey became like an accelerant. Marcus Garvey, Marcus Messiah Garvey from Jamaica, right? Benjamin Jaman, right? Yaman Jam. He became an accelerant, an accelerant to already what was there. This is what we point to ones like Reverend um, James Morris Webb. A lot of people didn't know about Reverend James Morris Webb. We can even say for ourselves, you know, years ago, we did not, I want to say many years, over a couple of decades ago, right, when we first came into, we could say Rastafari consciousness. And Rastafari consciousness, let me say this right here, Rastafari is, is not Jamaican. Rasta, Rasta may be Jamaican in that sense, right? But Rastafari come from Ethiopia as the light come from the lightning strike from the east, right, come from the east and it shines over here in the west. And the black American role, right? <laughs> We're actually playing it in the background again, but the black American role, the black American role in that equation, it's a lot of suppressed history, right? It's a lot of suppressed history. Just like we've been saying as black people for the longest, right? For the longest, we've been saying, okay, in the background, right? Like we've been saying for the longest, you know, that many things we didn't know. Or did you know that a black man did this? You know, a black woman did that. You know, that the first black, you know, the first person to do this or that was black. Do you know about the invention that we did? Even when ones were circling that information, we recall picking up on that like in the late 80s, early 90s, 1990s. And ones were substantiating what they were saying with evidence. But even though we was getting the evidence, many black people couldn't believe that we as black people had created or had invented so many things. You just couldn't believe it. You know what I mean? Now, now about what, 30, 20, about maybe 20 to 30 years later, we're on social media, everybody's kind of repeating bits and bytes more or less of the same thing and there's even more information that substantiates and proves this and it's even been taken up into mainstream, right? Not the fullness of it, but at least acknowledging, kind of conceding you know, like in debate, they concede to the fact, you know, they concede to the point for a moment. Like, oh, yes, black people did. Did you know a black person? Wow, we didn't know a black person such and such. And we need to know about the creation of all people because we here in America, we as Americans. And so they do this kind of melting pot thing and we get absorbed into the general, the general, um, the general, um, there's a word, morass, moray, like the general, like, you know, like we get melted down into the pot. You know, it's like a gumbo. We talk about gumbo up here, right? You know, some of our people talk about gumbo, right? In the Caribbean, they may talk about what, like a callaloo, callaloo, but it's the same, it's a similar, not the same, it's a similar kind of stew, right? So we're going to see to acknowledge that we as black Americans, do we have a culture? I would say 
yes, but we have not identified this because of this confusion, the confusion of the nations, the confusion of the Gentiles. We are like, we're like, we have cultural, if we under, first of all, what is culture? That's the point there. We have to understand what is culture, right? So when we say here in this vlog, this vid, not to be long, not to be long-winded, y'all, right? So hopefully, you know, the view time, one can hear the fuller full of this and like, share, and subscribe, and let's pick up a fuller reasoning. Maybe even we'll have a discussion on the platform, Rastafari Israelites, you know, where ones and ones can come forward and we can really reason and discuss this particular matter. But check out the real Dana, where she says that Judge Joe Brown says that black Americans have no culture. And we are agreeing with his argument, right? At first, we did not agree with the title. We said, what, 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 what? What was what, he talking about? And we thought about it before we even listened to it. And then we said, okay, let's come on and listen to it. And as we listen to the fullness of it, we accept his point, right? And his point is something that we, you know, the, if we have a culture, then we have ones amongst us that recognize the point raised is a valid point. Whether we agree with the conclusion of this one or that one, we cannot, we should not, let me put it like that, we should not dismiss it, right? We should not dismiss it. So what is culture? We talk about culture, right? Talking about education, talking about culture. Let's go over right here and let's go to this right here. So here, 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 right? Let's bring this up. Okay, the word culture, you know how we do, right? The word culture, what is culture, right? We're agreeing with Judge Joe Brown's perspective that we as black American when we say don't have a culture have not identified a particular culture as the other nations of the world right as the other peoples right of the world right and even as some of our people in other parts of this Western Gentile diaspora can't they have identified elements that connect them that, and traditions that they have kept here. Now, some of these traditions we still have as well. That's the part of what Dana was making her argument. But she was kind of flailing in a sense. She was like rapid firing. And I get it. Dana, if you hear this, I get it. I'm not just no, no diss, no sneak diss, no overt diss. If we had to diss, we will diss this, you know. But you, you were seeking to make points that many of us thank you for what you did. Because by what the point you tried to make, you pointed out many of the same arguments that we, as a knee, in a knee-jerk reaction, would kind of give, and you know we'll make those same knee-jerk reaction and say, "Oh yeah, we have a culture," you know, because what about the music? What about food? Now I remember that that part of the the the, the vid where Judge Joe Brown says food, <laughs> dancing, and then he sought to. This one that I love about the the elder, elder Judge Joe Brown. You know, he's one of our real more righteous judges. You know what I mean? He has that inclination. <laughs> he made this point when he says that if we had culture, right? He said if we had culture, we wouldn't be talking about Jesus. And when I heard that point from Judge Joe Brown, you know what I thought of brothers and sisters? I said, he's right. If we had culture, we would have been saying Yeshua, right? right? Or if we had culture even, right? We could even be saying Jesus, like the Ethiopians. You know what I'm saying? Or Yeshua. Or even, we could have even been saying Yeshu, right? As some of the Latter-day Jews, you know, European, mainly Jews, that say, will say Yeshu, right? In their way. That's a whole other reason right there. But it was a good point he was making, you know? Now he was talking about how Africa is right there, right? And we can reboot. We can kind of regenerate, right? We can be born again. See, this is the point. We can't see we're talking about being born again, right? From the so-called Bible. If we have real culture, we can apply those principles to what we're talking about right here without getting caught up in other nations, nationalities, the European, the Anglo-Americans interpretation. You know, like even on these platforms, sometimes we talk about, you know, the Bible or the scripture from our black people's perspective. Other people are throwing in other nations and other nationalities and saying, well, you're trying to take this person culture or, or what about those folks? You know what I'm saying? Is that when they're talking, if you go to many of the other platforms, like you can go to many other people's platforms, you know, like of the other nation and nationality, the other people who call themselves Jews or, or identify themselves as Israel, whether they're from this country or whether they have these cultural links with their faith in Judaism, so forth and so on. And they have all kind of discussions, conversations, and you rarely, if ever, see anybody drop down on their things who is not a part of their culture to criticize them or to stumble them in what they're saying. 
See, and this will be, you've been going through this for a while. It's like anything we say is for us as black folks, we have to somehow justify or, or codify. Not codify, but coddle, like a coddle and codify. Others and say, well, we don't mean that. You know, it's about all the people and everybody. And we say we black people, people get offended. And it's like with the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, where it says we the black people of the world. That was one of the first organization to really rise in that resurrection of that time. You know, the resurrection of that time was the Marcus Garvey, the Uni Universal Negro Improvement Association. When Marcus Garvey came to America, many people don't understand that Marcus wasn't even as effective as a speaker initially, right, when he first came to America, right? And also that Marcus Garvey was very inspired by ones like um, um, Booker T. You remember Booker T? Booker T. Washington. He came here to, to, to learn from Booker T. Washington how Booker T. Washington was doing what he was doing. Because he was seeing that kind of kind of a long term, right? A long term, and that was the beginning of the real sowing the seeds. We had that potential to establishing a culture, but since that time, like the time of say the Marcus Garvey's and before him, you know, the Black American Booker T. Washington and others. So when Garvey came here, he found more of more of a a a, a core. Right. He found more of a, you know, a base to build. Right. He found more of a base to build on than he had in Jamaica. There was more. In other words, there was more ones who were conscious of what Garvey. Right. What Garvey had in his spirit. Right. The spirit, you know, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, like that Bible prophecy says, the voice of one is the wilderness of North America. You see how we apply those signs there? The Bible talks about a voice of one crying in the wilderness. That's Marcus Garvey. He came where? He came here to North America. That voice crying in the wilderness here in North America. Right? So when we're speaking about culture, what is culture? So what is culture? Culture. What is culture? What is culture really? Culture. Hear that? Hear one hear the guy. Culture. Culture. Culture, culture, culture. Okay, let's go from low degrees to high degrees. Let's overstand. Could we be using words and we, we had arguments, people arguing, and sometimes they're making interesting points. But concerning the subject matter, sometimes it's like maybe we need to get into a definition of terms. So, here, here, here. This is why we agree with Judge Joe Brown and um, loves the real Dana, you know what I mean? Because she has some interesting, very interesting content, and she's one of the few we can say. Um, Black Americans, you know, I say proud black American that actually is out there in the social media, you know, pointing to our story, you know what I mean? Because even I and I, Ross Ayodonis Safari, yeah, I didn't hear, you know, I want to say, oh, you, you Rasta, you Rastafari, oh, oh, that's Jamaican, nah, 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 Rastafari is Ethiopian, let's overstand that, Ethiopian Hebrew, Rastafari is Ethiopian Hebrew, uh huh. Rasta, in a sense, you know, as things come out into the West, you know, can be considered somewhat, you know, because of, you know, the music and certain things out of Jamaica. But when we go to the roots, see, when we talk about culture, we're talking about roots, right? From the roots grow what the trunk and from the trunk grow the branches, right? And from the branches, the leaves, and hopefully it's a fruitful tree, right? So the origin here of the word culture, Middle English, denoting a cultivated piece of land. So what does that say? I say we as black Americans, by and large, not all, not all, not all, but we have lost our culture. I could have said, you know, we've been losing, I'm like losing our minds too, but we have lost our culture. So black Americans, I've seen this one right here, that black Americans, right? We black people here have lost our culture. Just like Judge Joe Brown is saying in that particular, I think like 20 something minute clip right there. And we try to try to keep this within that time frame as well and then pick up on some more but we're going to leave this right here with you for your consideration right concerning culture so we said black americans have no culture that's their video judge joe brown have no culture in the context that he explains his reasoning and rationale i fully agree he persuaded me right of his point you know i have to say if i was judging between the two the real dana and judge joe brown on this particular matter i get what Dana is saying, I hope she takes a listen to what 
Judge Joe Brown is saying as well, because both of them are looking at the fullness of this particular topic matter and issue. This is why I think the real Dana show, you know, is so is so, is so interesting, right? It's so interesting and also instrumental, you know, as far as we the black people. I got to thank my sister wife, you know, um, Isha Shelley, right? But here, 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 it's on the French word culture or directly from Latin cultura. What does cultura say? Cultura, can you see it right there? Let's let's zoom in on this right here. Cultura means what? It says growing, growing. Mm. That's why I said we've lost our culture, right? Historically speaking, we can speak about a lot of things in our history and say, oh yeah, that's black culture, unique to we black people up here. You see, some of us can talk about like the Geechee Gullah, right? The Geechee Gullah people, you know what I mean? In the the Gullah Wars. Why it had beat along with the native, the native, uh, the Native Americans, along with the natives, together with the black peoples, you know, the 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 Gullah people had joined together, right, to resist the enemy and on record, right. It was a, it was a couple of battles, yes, not not quite what the Haitian Revolution was, but that Haitian Revolution came after that. See, but a lot of us don't know about that. The first place you hear about black people successfully beating so-called white racism, white pseudo-supremacy, right, is Haiti over here in the Western region. And the only other place that was able to resist that over in the East was Ethiopia, right, of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right? We, the Israelites of Ethiopia, of the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. So that's interesting when we see black people resisting. But there's a third one to that equation, and that's the Gullah Geechee people over here in the Americas. And we have a culture. As Gullah Geechee people, we have a culture, right? A culture that we have been able, right, to sustain and to some significant level maintain, right, through these so-called 400 years, right? Just to point out that but that, that culture doesn't always resonate with other black people here, too, because you have to remember that we as black people are not a monolith necessarily, but here as black Americans. You know what I'm saying? That's the umbrella for all of us, whether Geechee Gull over here, whether in, in the Carolinas or over here or in the Midwest or so forth and so on. You know, those of us who have a 400 year we could say ancestry you know what i mean and ancestors and experience over here but let's go on this word right here it's from that word right there from latin cultura the verb right cultivation the verb from obsolete french cultura right or medieval latin culturare both right based on the latin colere you see colere let's zoom in on that colere what does colere mean we get into the root of culture, so take out the O, see how lingu language go? Take out the O, you know, you put a, a U, but getting to the roots, as we say, linguistics. But here, to tend to, to cultivate. But notice how the, the main link has to do with land, right? I, I want to point that out. And something that um, Joe Brown, when he was talking about well, Africa, like the content is just right there. And we're free to go back and forth and... and, we're, we're free, and I could hear real Dana, you know, Dana saying something uh, to the opposite on a certain level, you know what I mean? But um, he made a good point there. See, we're free to do that, but we've been distracted. That's what's been happening since, especially the civil rights, the civil rat race. Since the civil rat race, we've been greatly distracted, right? And we've gone from a situation that, albeit not perfect, was better to a situation that's worse and now we're in a situation here and there are better opportunities but we're distracted from them in these faux arguments right these particular faux arguments like some of us will say well yeah black people we do have a culture and our culture we're the ones who sh who did this and that for the white man and so but all that's just rhetoric right that's rhetoric what can we show and prove and manifest mm-hmm what land do we have that's our land? See, see, notice Haiti is a little different because even in the islands, the Caribbean, similar to the islands of Georgia, right? The Geechee Gullah, the Sea Islands there, we had land. See, whenever you have land and you connect it with that land, right? You also develop your own land gauge or language. You see what I'm saying? And then when somebody's trying to take something from you, it's supposed to take your land from you. Right? You are easily and able and able to fight and to resist, but when you don't have no land, 
See, that's how we lost a lot of our land, you know, in these kind of migrations and movements, you know, after this whole plantation experience, Dana touched on that right there. We, you know, had our own communities. But what happened, those communities haven't still been sustained and protected and fought from, it's been whittled away. That's why it's been lost. That's why I said we've lost our culture. These things have been lost. Let's go over here, right here to tend to cultivate. In the late Middle English, the sense was cultivation of the soil. Back to life, back to reality. Cultivation of the soil, right? That's getting to the roots. You see, we as Rastafari, right, and from the elders from such a time, I'm talking about the elders, the, the, the previous generation, the, the righteous, we're talking about the roots, right? Roots and culture, roots and cultivation. We have to cultivate. If you don't cultivate the soil, you really won't have no culture. You will be a beneficiary of somebody else's culture. And even if you had culture back in the days, if you don't maintain and sustain it, you lose it. If you don't use it, you lose it. So we as black Americans should acknowledge that we have lost our culture. In other words, we should get off of this pomps and pride trying to act like, yeah, we, we've done all this for everybody else. Yeah, some of that is true. But it's not really, it's just something to make us feel good in social media space. You know, it makes us feel good to say, yeah, and they got that from Africa, and the Europeans got everything from Africa, and this and came from Africa, while we stay, you know, while we go in circles, twiddling our thumbs, and we don't have no land. Land is reality, right? You know, um, security, food security. Mm. Hear the screeching owls in the background. You don't... You should be hearing birds and stuff like that. There are some birds here, but, you know, you hear those kind of birds there, you know, here in the shitties, right? Now, my people got land down there, but I'm up here in, in, this, in, in the north part of this country, right? Being smart, being wise should relocate if you think about it, right? Because of the cultivation of soil, and that's a preparation for even the promised land. Right from the early 16th century arose cultivation. Now notice from the early from this idea of cultivation of the soil. You see what it says? In the sense where it says in late Middle English, the sense was cultivation of the soil. And from this early 16th century. Now remember the 16th century. Well, like the 16th century that was um, like the 1500s, right? The arose cultivation arose the idea of cultivation of the mind faculties and manners see our ancestors we can say that there have been many um black culture manifestations where we had black culture so historically speaking we could point to some elements but even as judge joe brown was saying it was kind of like a a, a, a kind of like a, a hodgepodge in a sense you know it was like it was a kind of derivative in a sense, now we want to go down here and we'll point to this, but not to be too long winded in this right here, right? Now, tilling of the land. So, do we as black people have culture? What land do we till? Now, now you know the first thing some people are gonna say, there's a bunch of black farmers, a bunch? There are black farmers, but how do we support them? We who are city, who are city, in the cities, we should be supporting the black farmers. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of the Caribbean is just like down south. But it's a disconnection of many of us from down south and even, even the down south culture that have the land, they are caught up on the bright city lights. You see, so there's a lot of confusion going on. And then we talk about food and GMO and, and what people are putting in food and so forth. If you're tilling your own land, you have a certain amount of, 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 of management, control, and security right, of food. Right? That's at the bottom of culture tilling the, the land tilling so at the times in the black american experience where we were close to the land and we had our own land our communities and land then we can say we had more of a black culture not full and not perfect because of you know our whole experience over here you know in the americas and the caribbean like i said the point that joe brown said if we had a culture we wouldn't be talking about jesus and i say to that he's right if we had a culture we were talking about yeshua right we would be talking about yeshua or even I also, right? You know, in, or as we have in the content. See, not, not all black people became Christians or accepted any element of Christianity from white people. But yes, the majority of so called black and African people have been Christianized by white Anglo Saxon Protestant, 
might or the Catholicisms, the Catholicism schisms. But anyway, culture is tilling the land, the act of preparing the earth for crops. That's the bottom line of it. That's the bottom. Everything else is pseudo, really. Everything else is just another, it's a spin on it, right? As we have in these latter days and time, when we talk about culture, right? Cultura, a cultivating agriculture, figuratively here, culture, and honoring, right? The past participle of colere, to tend, to guard. You see what it says, to tend, to guard? Right? We've lost a lot of things. We talk about hip hop, we talk about even, even we say that the music, the music is an expression, can be an expression of culture. But even that, the whole battle about black music, look how we seem like we lost that too. Yeah, we black here, we do music. There is black music, yeah. But but if we if we don't if we don't benefit from the crops, you know, we put out the music, how do the artists benefit? How do black people benefit? Who benefits? The music industry? It all gets incorporated as American music, right? You know what I mean? And not even as specifically black American music. In fact, in Europe, Germany and some other places, they give us more credit as black people. You know what I mean? For our music. It's interesting looking at some of their, you know, programs and productions, right? Whether it's on black American music or on reggae. So we've seen that and they will actually make those connections much better. And these kind of documentaries almost never, you know, really appear in the States and are not really talked about. So, you know, most are not really on it. We get caught up on all this pseudo, on, on these pseudo celebrities and everything. And this is how we've been losing our culture. Right, this is how we've been losing our culture. See what it says to cultivate, to till, to cultivate a colony. Yeah, we should be establishing our own colony. Colony is not a bad word. Right? We should be colonizing our own thing, not not doing what white people did to other folks. A word is a word. How we use this word, how we empower the word, that's what makes a difference. Right? The meaning, the cultivation or rearing of crops, act of promoting growth in plants is the 1620s. This was transferred to fish and oysters. So, so notice how the cultivation and culture tends to deal with a lot of food and the land, right? And then in 1796, to production of bacteria or other organisms in a suitable environment. And in 1880, then the product of such a culture in 1884. Right? And then it goes on to say the figurative sense. What a figurative sense? Uh-oh. The figurative sense of cultivation through education, systemic improvement, and refinement of the mind is attested by circa the 1500s. This is what we mean by we've lost our culture. We lost the cultivation through education, systemic improvement, and refinement of the mind. Century Dictionary writes that it was, quote, not common before the 19th century except with strong consciousness with strong what? You see that word right there? Strong consciousness. We're going to highlight this just in case ones might not see it if they're watching it. See, you see, except with the exception of strong consciousness, a strong consciousness of the metaphor. So it's a mental thing. One's not going to get it. So you're going to hear people arguing because they don't mentally understand, right, the metaphor. Right, except with the strong consciousness of the metaphor involved, through you, though used by Latin in Latin by Cicero, meaning learning and taste. The intellectual side of civilization is attested by 1805. The closely related sense of collective customs, that's what people mostly are talking about, right? Collective customs and achievements of a people, a particular form of collective intellectual development is attested by 1867. So yes, we as black people, we do, we did have, but we've been losing it. Right? And we need to reclaim it. Right? For without culture or holiness, which are always the gift of a very few, a man may renounce wealth or any other external thing, but he cannot renounce hatred, envy, jealousy, and revenge. Wow. Culture is the sanctity of the intellect. Culture is what? The sanctity of the intellect. William Butler Yeats in Journal 7, March 1909. Then we have this that a lot of people may be familiar with. We're going to seal up and sum up right here. The slang culture vulture. You hear one talking about culture vulture? Mm. Culture vulture. What about culture vulture? Well, culture vulture, one voracious for culture, is from 1947. So people think it's something new today, but it's not. 
So when you hear ones like um, Damon Dash speak about it, this is something that was before his time even. He, was, he actually kind of brought it back and others, this conversation about culture vulture. Culture shock, disorientation experience when a person moves to a different culture environment or an unfamiliar way of life. Now that's deep there. We got to pick up on that. I tested by 1940 because this was what was happening to we black people moving from the plantation from the south to the north or from the south, you know, from the east, you know, to the Midwest or or to the, you know, to California, Oregon. You know, we bumped into different cultures, right? Disorientation. This is what black America is suffering from a disorientation experience when a person and black people have been moving to different cultural environments. And you know what's been happening here in America? Different cultural environments have been coming over here. We hear ones coming from the Middle East, Arab-speaking countries talking about racism against ones because of their religion, all kind of things, picking up on a lot of our ancestors' struggles and using things in the law that we thought were for black people. They're talking about their culture, and if we say anything that they think is, is anti them, they can use those things that were established or out because of this. Remember the education, the cultivation of the mind, the sanctity of the intellect? That's what's been lost. Otherwise, the others would not have been successful in shutting us up and keeping many of our people in this disorientation. So you get a whole generation that's a disorientated, right? Not that some of them because they're going to a different place and bumping into different culture, but other cultures have been bumping into us over here, especially since the, the so-called 1965. So I think it was the Immigration Act or Civil Rights Act that allowed other peoples to come over here and they all came under the same kind of black, we could say, you know, the black struggle, the black civil rights thing, until they struck out black and then become civil rights thing. You see, you always what's happened? That's a disorientation too, right? So it's not just us moving to different culture environments that's happened to us in our pre, say, you know, like, like in the 1865. But now after we get to 1965, it's other people my bringing their culture environments and unfamiliar ways of life over here, my, and it being backed up by those same laws that we thought were there to protect our culture. Ironic or contemptuous spelling of culture now for K, K-U-L-C-H-U-R, is attested from 1940. I know people thought that was something new, right? Spelling culture with a K. Nah, that go back to the 1940. You see, this is where we have to build up our intellect, and this is one of the reasons why, you know, we do this right here, here, here. But a little bit more on this. Yes, we have come to the fulfillment and the conclusion on this matter that Judge Joe Brown is right. But Dana made some very interesting points that, you know, we like to pick up on, right? You know, like like the arguments that we would make to say, oh, we haven't lost our culture. We still have culture. Please check out the etymology of culture because we don't know the etymology of culture. We could be just talking, talking and arguing and disputing and never come to no resolution. Once we understand what these words really mean and the context of these words, you know, then we can do the deed, you know, do the work. We can put in that work. We can get that work. You know what I mean? Get that work. Let's get this work on really building up our culture, our true culture, especially we once lost, now found black and brown people of the Bait Yisrael, the Beta Israel over here in the Americas and the Caribbean, even after these 400 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Ras Ayadonis Tafar. This is Yadon, Yadon Ben Chayel. Yes, I, L-O-J. The line of Judah Society, check us out, LOJS.org. Also, the evening podcast on the Rasta Farai, Israelites. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom, Lehitarot. Yeshua Shalom.